Hello and welcome into these devotional minutes. I'm Pastor Gary Brooks. Our theme is an invitation to trust God's faithfulness. Do we really need to be reminded to trust God's faithfulness? I think we do. Life can throw enough at us and our flesh can be quite weak at times. We can lose sight of, or even worse, lose hope in God. There are many attributes to ascribe to God. We can speak of His holiness, righteousness, omnipotence, meaning His unlimited power, His omniscience, His unlimited knowledge. But those can be quite frightening to sinners who are not holy or righteous who use what limited power we have for the wrong purposes and who can think we know a lot more than we do and misuse what we do know. There really is little about God that should comfort us in life's turmoil until we get to the promises God makes about what he has done to forgive our sins and his promises of what he is doing to comfort us, to empower us, and bless us. The scriptural record of God introducing himself as the God who makes promises said he is the compassionate and gracious God, abounding in faithfulness. Repeatedly, the scriptural record tells us of God's people praising him for his love and faithfulness. Yes, there are many reasons in our choices, our actions, in our heart, why God should have reason as far as it goes with us to say, forget them and go back on his promises. But God is faithful to his righteousness and does not go back on his word by ignoring his promises. God was faithful to his righteousness and did not ignore our unrighteousness in our past. He sent his only holy son into the flesh and named him Jesus, meaning he would save us from our sins. The faithful God placed the full blame for all our unrighteousness on the one Holy Son who could take it and come back from it. The Apostle Paul reasons in his letter to the Romans, He who did not spare his own Son but gave himself up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? God paid the high price of his son's death on the cross to forgive us because he was faithful not to betray his righteousness. In his righteousness, he could not ignore ours. Paul's reasoning is that if God was that faithful to not betray his own righteousness, he will also be faithful not to betray his promises. No matter how tough things get, we can depend upon God's faithfulness. With that reasoning in mind, listen again to a hymn you may know well, which sings to God, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Is above 
word, the epilogue, as a narrator frames the context of God's word for us, and an evangelist proclaims God's good news. Satan, the world, and our own nature deceive and threaten us. God alone is faithful to his promises and his righteousness. The scriptural record tells us that from the beginning, God introduced himself to a people he was raising up for himself in this way. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. He is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. The people God raised up worshiped and praised God's faithfulness to his promises to save sinners. We hear that praise in the Psalms. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast, love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your steadfast love is before my eyes and I walk in your faithfulness. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. As for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy from me. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. God is faithful to his promises to save us and meet our every true need for the sake of Jesus our Savior, who himself was faithful to his mission. Christ is faithful over God's house as a son, and we are in his house, if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. 
The Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God's faithfulness is our guarantee in a threatening and uncertain world. The faithful one blessing for us closes our devotion. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Trust and depend upon God's faithfulness. Amen. May it be so among us. Amen.